Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. I'm with Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey, Tom. And we've got an awesome, super special guest today. We have Martha Woodward with uh, Quality Driven Software, uh, Dusting Divas House Cleaning, and maybe a couple other things. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Tom. Hey, Liz. Hey, Martha. For a long time, I know that she does a lot of public speaking and training and uh, a renaissance person. Um, Can you see the comments, Martha? Real quick, Tom. Martha, can you see the comments? Um, I don't think so. I know a lot of people, when they get on, Tom, they can't find the comments. Over on the right-hand side of my window, there's a um, a little opening that says private chat oh, room. I oh, oh, no. all I'm going to do is to say they're right, they're right over here, but that doesn't help you any. Oh. <laughs> hey, Leslie. Yep. Now I see them. Okay. Yay. Wanted you to be able to see because they'll ask you questions. Usually I'll interrupt and ask questions, but you know, no surprise, Liz is interrupting. You know, <laughs> uh, Leslie and Dan are, are, are a few of our couple of our regulars here. And while I'm thinking about it, the question came up and, and Leslie asked yesterday. So I'm gonna, gonna answer her question now so I don't forget. Hey, Sarah. And da -da -da -da. Hey, Leslie. Nice well, you were asking about um, Sean Day's material and he sent me a link and I got it all up here and we're so special. He even built us a page on their website for oh. just our Facebook uh, live discussion. Oh. Well, I was totally worth that one day wait there. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. Sean, you're a rock star. Thank you. Yeah, he said that he doesn't type that fast. That's why it took him the extra time. But <laughs> There's a lot of there's a there's a lot of awesome stuff rolled up in here. So um, you guys want to check this out? I'll go ahead and copy and paste that here in the comments, and we'll probably share that again at the end too. But I just wanted to make sure I did. Did he share all of his questions? He did, didn't he? I know, right, Leslie? I can't believe he. That's that's awesome. I was like, should I ask him to give us all of his intellectual property? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> Who'd have guessed? That's pretty amazing. All righty. So, Liz, just, Liz, what have you been up to today? Talk to me. Tell me. Tell me about what you've been doing over the last twenty-four hours. Um, why? Why you got to do this to me? Oh, you prefer not to. Come on, it's <laughs> funny. It's funny. Uh, all right. So, you guys, I'm I'm filming. Um, class five of the professional house cleaning program, right? And just just so you know, six has already been in the can, ready to go, waiting on me for at least a week. Seven is almost done as well. And it's got like, I don't know, 4,000 slides or something. So we're waiting on me. I'm like, <laughs> yesterday, I finally get my class filmed an hour and I think 11 minutes. I go to play it with my fancy microphone. Actually, Martha, the microphone that you recommended that I buy, the one with that big head, remember? Yeah. That microphone, um, yeah, it didn't work. An hour oh, and 11 yeah. minutes, no sound. Uh, I, I almost crushed that thing <laughs> so fast. Uh, yeah. So I finally redid half of it or maybe three quarters of it again finished up a little after one o'clock last night yeah so it's coming y'all you can like you can be all hating on me it's all me that this is taking so long but i'm not even going to go over the rest of it because that's just it sounds like i'm making it up at, at some point in time it just there can't be that that much going on we're, we're going to do we're going to do like outtakes and we'll include, we'll include some. <laughs> um, you know what you look like at one o'clock in the morning do you know how many times i had to redo my makeup yesterday redo my hair for filming i i, I did my hair and my makeup like three times yesterday i'm like oh my gosh are you kidding me 
at one in the morning, my eyes are crusty. <laughs> like, this is terrible. <laughs> anyway, yes, right? Thank you, Leslie. It was painful. <laughs> uh, um, what we wanted to talk about today was uh, opportunities to build culture and shape your culture as part of reopening your business. And Martha does a lot of work in this area. Liz does a lot of work in this area too. So I'm planning on just kind of sitting back and watching <laughs> with you guys. And we're going to let Martha and, and, and Liz run with this. Um, what, what, what do you think, Martha? What, uh, what, what do we need to be uh, thinking about as cleaning business owners as we're restarting our businesses here after COVID-19? So, I mean, it's tough because we actually, my maid service actually shut down for four weeks. Um, long story short, but one of my staff members went to church and was exposed to the first person who died in Oklahoma and of COVID. And so we had a bit of a, and it was when everything was so new and, you know, so we had a bit of a, a crisis. It was unprecedented. In the, in the diva area. And so wow. we, we shut down for about four weeks. And so, um, as you know, they make way more money at home than coming back to work and pulling them off unemployment. Um, so that was scary being in that position where you knew they were, you know, your employees were making more money at home than you can give them when they come back, PPP money or not. Um, and so, that was a little bit more. Yeah. A lot more. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so that's quite the dilemma if you ever get in that position, if they never, are temporarily laid off, then it's not quite as bad. Although, you know, they still have friends and people who are at home making buku bucks while they're busting their butts. But anyway, so everyone came back. Um, and about the time they came back was when I got my PPP money. So I sat down with every single person and explained that I was going to pay them a little higher hourly rate for a limited amount of time. And I explained that I got the PPP money and I wanted to um, acknowledge their hard work with the PPE that they have to wear and, you know, all of those things. So, um, you know, I, I just always, it's a selfish thing. I mean, I want to get mileage out of anything that we're going to do. I want to get mileage out of it. And I didn't want to just put it on their paycheck without having kind of a ceremonial thing where you sat down and, um, it worked out well timing wise because I could do performance evals oh, and nice. talk about the extra money. Yeah. Um, so, so that's one of the things that we're doing to try to help with the morale during this point in time and, and make up a little bit of the loss <laughs> that they got by coming back to work which is kind of crazy. Um, but then just doing things that will just boost morale overall. I mean, for us, summers in general, um, and it's only mid-June, so it's not that bad yet, but summers in general are the time that we have to work pretty hard to keep morale up because it gets to be a hundred-ish here with humidity and um, not Charleston humidity, probably, but in <laughs> uh, so summers, we always try to run a little bit more in the fun programs and the contests and things like that. Um, 
So we're actively planning our summer party. Uh, we are going to restart our office meetings, which we haven't been doing our staff meetings um, for a while, but we're going to start our staff meetings back in July. Uh, probably in Oklahoma, we're a little further along on our phases than some of you all. Um, and then, you know, just the normal stuff that we do as far as it has been a wealth of opportunity for all the glowing comments that yeah. we get back from the surveys. Yeah, I mean, you know, you talk about like when we when we did let our clients know we were going to start back and I was calling our employees back to work, I, I shared like all the glowing comments that were coming in from our clients going, Oh my gosh, I have missed you so much. And you know, all of the, Oh, we're so glad to have you back cleaning, uh -huh. but you know, they said more than just, I'm glad to have somebody clean my home. They said, you know, how much of a difference it makes in their lives. And so I copied and pasted all of that in our staff group and just am continually trying to make sure to call attention to how much people value the work that they do. So, I have a question, Martha. With uh, with quality driven, you have access to, and the people are 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 sharing all of this data. Um, are you finding that across the board that the customers are happier and giving more positive feedback than in the past? Or you know, a lot of people are saying, "Oh, they're going to be crabby when we open again. They're mad." But I, I was curious, what what are you seeing across the board there? Our scores are pretty, our response rates and our scores are pretty much the same, oh. you know, before versus after. What is different is we're getting a lot more comments. So uh. the scores are about the same. People are just elaborating a little bit more and, you know, letting us know how happy that they are that we're back. Oh, so nice. So they're rejected. they're actually feeling the gratitude and 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 yes. and spread that out. Oh, that's super nice. Uh, yeah. I do like that. Are you noticing any difference between like um, areas like the West Coast? Their scores are you know higher, lower. The um, East Coast. There uh, is there any difference going coming back? Because um, I know some. Parts of the country opened up sooner than others and some never closed at all. Like we never closed where we are. I'm not really seeing any demographic differences. And um, but I will say this, I get some people who have been pretty down and out about the whole economic thing. And, you know, like the people I'm thinking of were shut down for a while and kind of in that bad New York area particularly yeah. and yeah. some in Washington, but I have been getting like some private messages where they take screenshots of their scores or I have heard they people say their response rates are higher. Mine are about the same, but um, response rates higher and I see these screenshots and you know how I share with our staff, they share with me saying, nice. this is, this is like the bright spot in coming back. Um, you would know okay. some of these people that, you know, <laughs> it's just like, uh, and that's awesome. I love, yeah. because you know what, if they weren't asking, if they weren't surveying, they wouldn't hear this and their staff wouldn't hear these things. So I love it. Yeah, I, I love it too. I, I, I love that you're taking those and using them 
to build culture while you're in a down spot. You know, you're just printing those all out. People don't even understand how how impactful that can be to the house cleaning professional, right? To be able to see, wow, I am appreciated. Wow, people do value what we're doing, especially all the yeah. comments. The scores are great yeah. too, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but the comments are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I tell a funny story that uh, in our staff meetings, in our monthly staff meetings, um, there's a lot to cover. And so, you know, with quality driven, you, the employees can log in and they can see their own scores and they see all that. Plus, I usually try to take like the over the top comments and put them in our private staff group. So, we have an agenda for our staff meeting and a part of the agenda is I try to go around and at least have one glowing comment for each person that I read out loud. Uh -huh. And um, because there's a lot to cover, I a few months back asked them, I said, you know, we could probably skip this part because you guys can <laughs> comments. And it was funny. I mean, I really meant it because I felt like they can see it. I right. posted, but it was really funny because nobody said, oh, no, I want you to brag on me. Oh, but what they did say, they kind of put their head down and they were like, no, we can we can leave this in. And I was well, like, we'll be okay with this. Okay. Noted. They like it. You know? So, uh, you maybe we I, could not have breakfast or maybe we could not get paid. No. Instead, but let's, let's leave those in. All right. <laughs> you tell me I'm awesome. Yeah. yeah. But you know, you sometimes even I start thinking, Oh, they get a lot of that. And, uh, and then, it's very apparent. I'm thank goodness I asked, you know, yeah. but it's very apparent that it's like, no, no, they, they <laughs> want and need this, but you know, that just goes to show because, um, I mean, man, if I was questioning it and I do a lot of that, you know, for the people who don't do yeah. that, you should know that just, just, the simple praises that take so little, they're free, you know, it doesn't cost you a dime, but man, does it make a difference to how you make them feel. Well, you know, I, I know two people, one of them's in our mastermind group and um, they use quality driven to survey their employees to find out where they're doing yeah. And, yeah. and I'm like, now that is awesome on top of yeah. seeing both. So you get you get both sides, that nice rounded view. I yeah. love that idea. Oh, Leslie yeah. calls them kudos. Yeah, I, that's a great term for them, right? It makes people feel yeah. good. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I do love that. And it's why, you know, one of the things that we teach at Foundations is that they don't ever get too much feedback. Nobody right. in the in the 27 years I think I've been in this industry, there has never been one time where one employee said, you know, Liz, could you like just back off on the on the on the positive feedback? <laughs> just, you know, just, I just don't need quite as much. Not once, you know. Right. And, and yeah. one of the things that I did have one gal say, uh, so we we do like to survey as well. How are they doing? And yeah. one. One of the questions was, how often do you like to get feedback? And her response is, mm, three times a day is about right. <laughs> what? I was expecting you know, three times a month. I was like, oh, it must be like a typo or no, three times a day is about right. And that's a lot that's, of tally marks. That's a lot. That is a lot. <laughs> You're right. Uh, so um, I have another question, Martha. You said that you guys are planning your um, summer barbecue. Did you say barbecue or party? Party. Party. So is it outdoor? <laughs> it's 100 degrees there. What do you do? I, know. I, I actually give them three choices. So they they have right. to vote still. But um, I, 
I try to give choices where our summer party is usually a family party. And then our Christmas party, sometimes is family oriented and then sometimes it's like staff or one guest and I let them vote on that. Um, but so it's either going to be, we've got a water park. Um, generally that's what they end up voting on is um, there's a water park in my town, my little town of Independence, Kansas, that is 90 miles away from them. And they actually usually vote on that. I don't know what they'll say this time, but uh, they actually vote on that because it is, I mean, our town is for 90 this little miles town, one way, one way, it, 90 miles, one, one way. way. One way. And I offer things like that are in their backyard. Um, but I think it's because I think they vote for this a lot of times because it is so cheap. I can do a lot of things. Um, so this water park is $3 a person, but yet we have a lazy river and all kinds of things. And I mean, we can do a big big blowout if they come to cheap independence and well, oh. we can't do as much if we go <laughs> and oh. i think it feels more special to them because it is a solid day outing for them yeah. um yeah what but then the other, just, just give us perspective what are the other two options so we so we uh have a laser tag okay. and then yeah. Tulsa has this. Um, so you want to see how they compare? Well, you know, the, like we can wash the company cars. We can yeah, exactly. Right. These two are painful, and this one where you come up that's convenient for me. You know. Yeah. <laughs> nice. yeah. No. And the other one is we have this um, park in Tulsa which is very close to most of them. Um, and it is in the top 10 parks in the U.S. So uh, I think it's supposed to be, I want to say it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to misquote. I think it's rivals Central Park size or something. But uh, anyway, it's crazy. Kaiser Foundation built it. And um, so that is one of our things on the list but uh yeah tom one would think that i offer these other bad choices so that they'll pick independence <laughs> but I mean, have, that's what i was thinking yeah, yeah like, we have a yeah, merry go round what's that great i bet seriously yeah. at three bucks a person i mean that yeah like I want to go there. I'm like, it's it, we, an airplane ride. I know. We have a merry-go-round that they charge five cents for. We have <laughs> a miniature train. We have miniature golf. They charge seventy five cents. So I'm telling you. That is, uh, that's awesome. I love that. that. For me. <laughs> yeah, that is really awesome. I love that. Well, what a what a yeah. great thing. So yeah. Um, I, I do like that you are saying also that you're doing all of this planning while you're just opening up, giving, getting people excited, getting them to focus in on the positive instead of on the negative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's there's yeah. just so much going on. How long have you guys been open now, Martha? Uh, it, right around the 1st of May. So we've been oh, back a while. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, and knock on wood, it's all, you know, everybody's been great. They really, really have. Um, Martha, how would you know? You're not really there. <laughs> um, I know. So I did meet with them, like I say, one-on-one. -on -one, and then we communicate quite a bit through our private Facebook group. Okay. And I mean, you're right. 
I'm not there. I see them physically once a month um, and not even that much with the COVID thing and not meeting as a group. Um, but this sounds weird, but I just know. <laughs> so in the private Facebook group, you know how you can just tell like if people are cranky, you know, and uh, like the responses are cranky. When I see a lot of crankiness going on, um, where I can tell they're irritated by the response, then I will come down and, you know, if, I, if it's a particular person, I come down and meet with them. If I feel like it is kind of widespread, then I plan a fun event, you know, that, hey, yeah. let's get together, you know, or sometimes I'll say, because I've got the two branches and sometimes I'll say, okay, I'm going to meet this group on this day. I'm going to meet this group on this day. And I just meet with them for lunch. Um so while I'm not there, I feel like I'm decently perceptive on, on how they're answering or maybe not answering is another thing that I pick up on. If, you know, if we're asking questions and people aren't answering us like normal, then that also is at least oh, a yeah. yellow flag to me. So you do have some measures that you're looking at to keep track of the culture, even though it might not seem like traditional measures, like looking at the people and asking yeah. them. There are some measures, how, how much people are responding, how snarky or cranky I think you said that they are, um, th those types of things. Okay, that, that makes good sense. I'm curious also, have you... Um, because you are, you know, um, an absentee owner for the most part, do you have have you used um, Zoom, Ring Central, any of those before COVID hit? Did you feel like you had any kind of an advantage in that area that other people might not have? I used Facebook Lives. So since we have a private group, I use yeah. Facebook Lives, um, and. We actually, when we do our once a month meeting, my office manager now lives in Georgia and then the rest are just VAs that um, we don't really involve in staff meetings. Mm -hmm. um, so we always Zoom in my office manager to the monthly meetings. So I'm present, she is not. And we do utilize it that way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've definitely had to, we have had zero management staff in the office for a year and seven months now. Wow. And yeah, and our client satisfaction is still 98%. And and every time I do have a staff meeting with them, we do do a, a employee satisfaction rating. And it's the one from Culture Works book. So I have them rate, I actually have them rate their satisfaction between one and 10, which seems funny because, you know, customer, I mean, customer. Customer thermometer. That was a lot of quality driven uh, is on a one to five. And um, but I I for this I have them do the one to ten and we actually we do it verbally. Um because we have very open communication, I can do it that way. And they will tell me. And, and you know, we, we have an interesting dynamic, but they'll tell me. Um, and if they don't tell me, it's, you know, the seven, I guess. And then I'm like, what? 
you know, <laughs> what do you mean you guess, you know, and we'll, we, we have a lot of, I do a lot of joking and a lot of very open education. So then once they do the rating, the important thing is they, and they now know, you know, I'm going to do this because I've done it for so long, but it's what will it take to raise it one number? And then we go around and that's usually when any of the, issues are identified um, and typically they tend to be scheduling issues you know I don't like it when you know I'm always assigned to these deep cleans or whatever that's when those uh, things but, yeah 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 some but, of those things are are across the board, right? It doesn't really matter if your company is in Washington State, Ohio State, or Texas. That mm -hmm. those some of those problems are just, gosh, universal. If we could solve right. those, we could take over the world, right? So right. at least take over that cleaning world. So Martha, I got a, a, another couple of questions here. Hey, if you guys have any questions for Martha, um, go ahead and post them. She will happily. Um, help you out. Um, uh, let's see, Sarah and Denise are both talking about how they love your culture course. And I'm wondering if you have any suggestions for the audience about um, what, what things that they might do um, while they're opening up, maybe that are coming from, from your course. Um, you know, I mean, my biggest suggestion is going to be, I mean, they're not earth shattering things, but my biggest suggestion is to be communicating really well, listening to the frustrations. Um, and you that that's where you all have an advantage that I definitely don't, because I think I would hear a little more of that and, um, be able to catch it maybe sooner because of seeing faces or hearing the tone. Um, yeah. but, but definitely listening. And what I find is, I certainly not everybody does this, but what I tend to see or hear is people knowing there's a problem, but they don't address it. Like, I guess it's human nature that we would rather brush it under the rug and hope it goes away. But one of the suggestions that I would give is if you hear rumblings or you know of issues, just address them head on. And, and you know, you have to empathize. You have to come from a place of not discounting what they have to say and no, you can't always fix the problems, but you need to at least listen. And at least if you can't fix the problems, then you say why. And if you are going to attempt to fix the problems, don't drop the ball. You know, I think, um, I think a lot of people um, tend to say, I'll look into it or I'll see what I can do. And then it might As a brush off. Yes. And I just think that's so much more detrimental than just saying, you know, I can't do that. And here's why. Or yeah. if you say, I'll look into it, then make sure to set a reminder or whatever you have to do to be able to follow back and uh, let them know because otherwise what you're saying to your employee is you don't matter and that uh, it's just not as it's not important enough for me to come and give you an answer so yeah, and not even that it's not important enough you're not important enough I know. I, yeah I, i'm too busy doing important things to deal with you, lowly cleaning professional. <laughs> that, that you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, so 
the communication, like over communicating would be a suggestion. And then what we talked about as far as really seizing every day an opportunity for phrasing. Um, and I know, you know, like I had a culture class today and I mentioned you twice, Liz. Like it was like, oh, I think I got that from Liz Trotter. Oh, I think I got, but really, you know, you were very, you were very instrumental in teaching me how important recognition was. And, um, and you know, today y'all. Liz, she does that? a great job of that, doesn't she? That's she right. does a very good job of that. Uh, she's a leader in that. And but you know, I I do think that, uh, and I'm sure you said this, and I really feel this that my job, I feel like my job is when they leave the company. They're not going to remember all my pay for performance programs and all of that, because that's really not the touchy feely stuff. What I hope that they remember is how we made them feel that we made them feel empowered and we made them feel very valued. And so I feel like during this time, where it's kind of scary and it's hot and you got to wear all that crap, you know, you got to step it up. And, um, you know, we would do things in the summer, like be the ice cream truck and, uh, play the music, deliver the, uh, deliver a, a freezer full of different kinds of ice cream or deliver sandwiches or, you know, just, acts of appreciation and uh lots of kudos well you know i think it's funny because the first thing you said when i asked you is you said well it's nothing really very great but you know i i would argue that point heartily because really that open communication very clear like caring i think that's top i think that's as good as it gets right there even if that's all you do, you're like head, heads and shoulders above so many other people. So, I mean, I think that's huge. It can seem like we're not really doing anything, but for the people that we're working with, it, it matters. You know, they, that, that feeling, like you said, of I'm important enough for, especially no matter how big your company is, no matter who you are, uh, you're the big boss. I remember yeah. actually, um, Sarah Mitchell's on here. I remember having this conversation with her at one point in time. We were sitting at these on these high chairs on this big high top table. And I remember telling her she's she was, you know, upset about it, something. I was like, Sarah, you forget. You're the big boss. Everybody looks up to you. She's like, but I'm not. Yes, you are. <laughs> Every <laughs> single one of those people that work for you, you know, they they feel like you're the, the big boss. Hey, I see we got Ginger watching here and Ginger. Must be your birthday. Leslie is saying oh, happy yeah. birthday. Happy birthday. Hi, happy birthday. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, uh, good day here, June 10th. I know a couple of people with birthdays today. Isn't it weird how Facebook really keeps you abreast of all of the people that you know that have birthdays? Yeah. I, I, I think it's fun comparing who who whose birthdays are today. Like, yeah, she's they're very similar or very dissimilar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> that that happens a lot too, right? Or it does for me. And every once in a while, you'll get a day, and it was nobody's birthday. How do you know over two thousand connections on Facebook, and yeah. it was nobody's birthday? I mean, am I the only one that does the math back nine months to try to figure <laughs> out what, what was that date? That was weird because that just happens so seldom. Well, I think you uh, analyze it way more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. That, that wouldn't be the first time somebody said that to me. 
Uh, well, anything else that you think would be helpful for people to know about right now while they're opening that can, because a lot of people right now, Martha, are having trouble finding people to work and they, it, maybe they have the people that they have, but they need to hire more people, right, as, as we're opening up. And people are struggling. We had uh, Sean Day on here yesterday. Was it yesterday, Tom? No. It was two days ago. Monday. Yeah, day before. We had Matt on here yesterday. Um, and he was talking about, you know, he um, has blue skies and they do the hiring there. And he was saying how, yeah, it's, it's hard. You'd think it was going to be easy with what's unemployment, 13% right now? No, it yeah. depends. I mean, they came out with some numbers that says around 13 and a half, but most people feel that it's it's a few points higher. But they had yeah, some but weird, it, weird things. It and they were, it, the way they calculate it with the people that were furloughed and so on and so forth, it's it's a few points higher than that technically. But anyway, it's high. It's it's unprecedentedly high. Yeah. 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 Well, the depression. I, I'm impressed with Tom twice. Yeah. What's that? Go ahead, Mark. So Tom is very good at making sure that he points out to us that we are living in unprecedented times and that this is an unprecedented event. And he missed a day uh, 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 about a week or so ago. I'm, I'm especially <laughs> obligated to use the word at least once every uh, five. So he's making up for it now and using it at least twice a day, every day. So he, he got it in twice today. He's doing, he's doing well. Uh, what were you saying, Martha, though? Well, I... I am not finding that we are having an easier time hiring right now, even with these unprecedented times. I, uh, <laughs> I, we are getting plenty of applications, but um, you know, I just, they're not, we're not getting very many quality candidates. Yeah. Um, so we are, one thing I'm working on right now is, um, so I'm working on a video and you guys may already have this, but I'm trying to put together a video that is kind of a, recruiting why you want to work for us video and um what i'm planning to do is when we go through the steps and we've invited them for an interview then this video will go out and it is going to have me going through our um i'm going to go through our our website, our employment page, and then I'm going to be showing them some of our internal stuff, like our career career letter, um, all the different ways that they can get bonuses. And then um, I actually use our quality driven comments yeah. in the recruitment ad. And I say, here's what real clients have to say about our employees. And then, you know, I usually list five, seven of them. And they're the ones that those comments that talk about how much of a difference they make in people's lives, in the, their lives. And um, anyway, so I'm going to do a little video on what's in it for them, you know, and highlight the things that we do. And then a little section about basically um, the we're going to build you up kind of feeling. Yeah. Um, and then see if that just any of those people that we've invited for an interview, um, because some of them don't show up. Um, now, I don't know if the ones that didn't show up would have been people we wanted anyway, but they could be. They could have taken another job before they ever get to us. So, um, 
yeah, I'm just trying to stuff our game a little bit and be as an attractive as company as we can be in this time. Well, you know, you hit on something, Martha, that I think is kind of golden right there. You know, I'm always preaching about matter, meaning, and measure, and that those three things just make people not want to leave they're like glue in your company right if they feel like they matter if they feel like there's some meaning in their work and they know what the measure is so that they can see wow i'm kind of a rock star <laughs> right it's kind of hard to leave a job like that and so you are talking about hitting all of those things right how how uh, how do they matter how what kind of meaning are they bringing to the world by the different types of contact uh, content uh <laughs> comments that that the people say the ones that say how valuable and how they're improving their lives and then also the measure right of the different scores and all that stuff so yeah. i i that's, yeah. i'm thinking why am i not doing a better job of that <laughs> well, you. you know if you, tie, if you tie this in with the context of reopening your business i mean when has cleaning ever been as important and matter as much as it has. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's Absolutely. really an opportunity to reframe what we do in a, in a way that makes it matter a whole lot more than maybe what people perceived it did three months ago. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very true. Uh, and I think a video is a really uh, great move too. A lot of people are, are moving to video. You get so much better response as long as those videos aren't too long, right? And as so, long as you have the sound on. <laughs> Tom, you got to go there. <laughs> I'm just going to have to go take a nap. I'm just still distressed. It was so horrible. For those of you that were on late, bummer. You're going to have to go back and listen to why that's distressing me. I love that. My cat gets uh, upset when I get um, upset. So see, she's comforting me right now. But she knows. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry, y'all. Come on. Get off there. All right, so um, Tom, can you talk a little bit about um, the new platform? I had a couple of people ask me today about the platform. Sorry, guys. Sure. That'd be great, thanks. Let me see if I can share a screen. How am I gonna do this? And actually, Martha, if you have, if you wanna share, um, I'm thinking that most of the people on our call already know about Quality Driven and they're probably already signed up. But if you want to be able to post that link or send it over to Tom, how they can get more information about Quality Driven. Also, the culture program, right? Now, okay. now is the time. Anybody that is um, um, not focusing on culture right now is going to find themselves in a worse place in six months. Mark my words folks right now is make or break time right now you have a supreme opportunity don't squander it right so i'm if thinking you wanna, if you want to pull something up on your website martha and, and share that with us now would be a, a good time okie dokie i will, while you, I while will you, work you, on that yeah while you're doing that i'll i guess i always have a heck of time doing that but balance into uh, the new platform. Here it is. Uh, we had a bunch of emails go out Monday. I know that we've had some questions, but I believe that <clears throat> most people have successfully uh, made it over to the new platform. We've got uh, two classes that we're offering, you know, the COVID class, which has been out there for, you know, several weeks, I guess. When did we do that? April? I don't um, know. Um, I was calling uh, by a lot last time. Yeah. Right now, before it was just hard to manage and we were like working off of a couple of different pieces of software to make all this thing work. But if you want to sign up for courses or if you want to buy courses for your entire uh, company, you can can do that. Um, you We've got like bulk discounts here. The courses now, we set it up since we're the new platform, we're going to, we we're able to make them last a year or be good for a year. So you can buy like a year's worth of courses at a time and then sign your own, you know, cleaning professionals up 
as as you go through through the program. But uh, you just just purchase here, and you throw them in your cart, and you see the discount when you're you're you're, you're checking out. Say if I'm like doing ten, bang 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 bang. Yeah. Tom, it sounds like a couple of people are having trouble. Danit and Leslie, their links show no classes. Have you um, instant? Leslie did. She wow. emailed. Okay. Um, well, let me let me get a note. I know that Maria is is handling the the, the customer service side of this now. Looks like Danit has been talking with Maria, so that's. That's getting that fixed, but okay. all right, good. I'm I'm glad you guys are in contact. That getting yeah. that fixed. And Leslie, if um, well, I'll go ahead and I'll pass this on to to Maria to make sure that uh, she at least reaches out to you and we can can figure that out. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the details, but it was a monumental exercise. There were so many people that 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 we had to move over and we had to sort out and figure out which students belong to what companies and it was um <laughs> we always strive for perfection but we knew that there were going to be a few glitches once we got into it so we appreciate your your, your understanding with that but uh here's a new platform you can sign up and we've got some some tutorials here so like if you're uh an admin you can click here and there's videos on how to enroll your, your 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 people and how to keep up with progress and how you can add extra people in, in your business to do the admin work if you're uh, if you don't want to do it do it yourself. I don't know. I mean, we I, I don't want to get in the weeds in this today, but maybe we could take uh, a whole other session and do this sometime. If we want, you know. Okay. Also, Tom, not Tom, Martha. I don't know if you saw, but Heather Canning is on. Says so good to see you. So, hey, Heather. Heather. And Tom, I sent you the links that Martha sent me. I also don't see us in classes. Sorry, Debbie. Looks like a uh, good thing we didn't try to roll this out on Friday. Can you guys imagine if you didn't have any contact over the weekend? <laughs> Aren't you glad now? See, great, great timing here. And, we're, um, we send the, and, and we send the emails to help at moderncleaning.com. We had... Uh, Set up a special mailbox just for that. Okay. But um, Debbie, I'll, I'll pass your name on to uh, Maria as well. Martha, I love the look of this um, pay for performance expert site. Did your daughter put this together? Uh, no, are you kidding? She's way too busy for me these days. <laughs> it's nice. Who did it? <laughs> Um, this lady named Tina Tower. Oh, never uh, heard of. Her. If you, you don't use uh, Riley, you gotta use Riley, Martha. You I have, I do phone. use Riley. Oh, okay. So the the online course is on this platform called Kajabi, which oh, okay. is. You want to share you your know, screen? What's that? You want to share your screen? Sure. You can show us. When you pick share screen, what I found yeah. is you have the application. Don't share your actual screen. Okay. Otherwise, you'll get this like weird cascading effect. Oh, I like that. <laughs> no, you don't. You always try to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> it only lasts a second. I don't see what I want. Um, okay. Here we go. Find it. Yeah. So All right. Now can you see? Yep. yep. There it is. This is not the actual course. This is just the landing page to sign up for the course. Um, but it does go through. There's the payforperformanceexpert.com uh, July 2020 because it starts July 1st is the next one. Oh, and okay. it'll just take you through the, it's a 10 week course and it will take you through these 10 weeks on the modules. Um, I do have a like informational webinar about it tomorrow oh, and okay. I can post the link for that, um, which would probably be the best thing. Yeah. So 
And then for those of you who don't use Quality Driven and are interested, it's pretty easy. QualityDrivenSoftware.com. <laughs> yes, I'm getting much easier. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And for anybody that doesn't know what QualityDrivenSoftware.com is, it's quality tracking. It's a way of surveying all of your customers and finding out exactly how happy or not they are. So, and it does a whole lot more than just that, but that that's the basics. If you don't know yeah. how, how happy they are, you need to. It's important. Yeah. 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 It, uh, it is to retain your clients, but it's also for employee performance tracking. So. Yo, would you, if if you had to put a number on that, Martha, how would you say that um, using Quality Driven has improved your employee retention? Like, um, like a certain amount of time that people stay or just the satisfaction level while they're with you? How does it impact your retention? I would say because we built so many programs around the data and quality driven, yeah. it's got to be up there around seven or eight, maybe wow. even higher, Liz. I, you know, wow. I, I, I don't want to give it all the credit, but it's like, so in the culture course, you do not have to use quality driven to go through the culture course. But mm -hmm. you know, what's funny is every one of the modules you, if you used quality driven, there's things you could pull that would apply. I mean, for example, as simple as training, when people get out of training, me sitting a hundred miles away, I can watch those scores and know within a couple of weeks of them being out of training, if they're going to make it or they're not going to make it. Uh, you know, it, it everything we do um, kind of comes back to it. And say, so the employees that stay with us, stay with us for years, and it is an equal part, at least a seven or eight, but it, it also is an integral part of the people that we weed out too. So those people hate it. So I just really I like a huge piece of the puzzle, but I see that we are over time because we are just not good at operating on a, on a timely fashion. Well, we haven't even been on an hour. That's why we're well, we we're started gonna, we're a couple of minutes late, which I'm sorry, you guys. We we were um, slackers. Well, that we need that we that we need to work on. That was me. Yeah. Yeah, um, oh, we're going to blame it on Martha. That's what we like to do. Let's blame the guest because she's not going to be here tomorrow. So yeah. it was all Martha. <laughs> okay. So tell us about who we're going to have here tomorrow, Liz. Who are we going to have here tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow's Thursday. Tomorrow's all right. Thursday. And... So we're going to have Paul Weber here tomorrow. Yes. And um, Paul Weber is he he is um, he wor he works well he has a few different jobs but one of his jobs the things he's going to be talking about tomorrow is Primerica and how you can use the contacts in Primerica to help grow your employees give them more to the job than just cleaning toilets right not most cleaning toilets I I like it but um, that there's more to this job than that and help them build them up. And uh, especially a lot of our people have a lot more money right now. And so it's good timing to help them figure out how to manage this money so that in six months, they're not right back to where they were, especially anybody that was collecting um, any unemployment monies or anybody that was on work share. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways that people are getting a lot of money. Uh, he also has a course that is a free course that you can send your employees through to teach some, them some financial management skills. And I'll tell you what, I, that is golden to me. I mean, most of the people that come to work for me um, struggle with money. 
and, and, and they need all the help they can get and they really appreciate it. So we have quite a few people that have bought some houses and cars and all that good stuff. And I'm hoping that Paul can share with that, with that some of that stuff tomorrow. It's a win-win. The more we can help our cleaning professionals, our team members be successful, the more successful we're going to be. Um, that's awesome. I'm looking forward to that. Friday, we're going to um, have on the spot, that is a rapid fire question and answer period. Um, it'll be Liz, myself, and a special guest that you're just going to have to come here Friday to find out who it is. We need to get one minute to answer your, your questions. We have a clock that will show the seconds counting down. And if we haven't answered the question within a minute, we'd get shut down and we go to the next person. So it's really fast. So be thinking about your questions because we'll need a bunch of questions to make that work. I just got confirmation about next Friday's guest too, Tom. Is that so okay? You remember who we talked about? Yeah, I do, yeah, so. Yep, she's a bell. But you'll have to come back. Next Friday, Friday That's after, right. we'll hear about that. Yeah. But, um, we're, well, we're uh, let, let's let poor Martha off the hook here. Thank let's you, Martha. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, guys. We really we appreciate it, Martha. Super, super helpful yeah. for everybody to get, get everybody uh, getting started back on the right foot. That's we'll right. Uh, see you guys here tomorrow, 5 o'clock Eastern. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. Bye. -bye. Bye.